Well, hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Sunday. If you're watching this live, if you're watching a recording, happy whatever day it is. Um, yeah, so today we are going to be talking about how to tell when your dog is healthy and vital. And that may seem kind of like an odd topic, but it's an interesting topic and one that a lot of people actually search for. So what prompted me to do to, uh, to talk about this today, uh, to bring up this topic and to uh, do some research on it and bring you some really good information um, is that I, <laughs> this is going to sound funny, stick with me. I trimmed my dog Kim's back nails for the first time ever the other day. And it's not because I have been like ignoring them. It's not because I've been having somebody else do them. It's because they never grew. And for the very first time, when I trimmed her nails the other day, I checked her back. I always check her back nails just in case. And they had never, they never grew. Well, let me tell you, they had been growing. And I just thought that was really, really interesting. So I started like, in my mind, what has changed? What have we been doing differently? And there was one thing that I really feel like made all the difference. So I wanted to briefly talk to you about that. Um, and But before I do tell you about that, I want to go over some of, you know, what I wanted to talk to you about today. How how can we tell their dog is healthy and also vital? And what is really interesting is that Dr. Will Falconer, he talks about vital animals. That's, that's his website, vital, vital animal. Uh, he has the vital animal podcast. And when he talks about being vital, he's saying that um, an animal that is vital is wildly healthy and naturally disease resistant. And those are his words. Um, and I like, wow, that makes a huge difference in how we look at our pets, right? Because, and a lot of us, like as humans as well, like we're just surviving. We're just getting by. Our pets are just surviving in general. I'm not saying all, of course, but that, why is that the goal? Like thriving. And I know I've talked about thriving before. Let me pull this. A little closer to me because I feel like I'm I'm leaning a lot and I don't want to be leaning a lot. So the idea of thriving versus just surviving. Um, guys, while I do see we have a few people watching, I, I am live on YouTube and Facebook, and I'm also going to be posting this on onto my Rumble channel uh, once we're done. But while you're watching live, you can post wherever you're at and I will get notified of the comment. So go ahead and post in the comment section um, or the chat section, depending on where you are. If you're watching a replay, you can still post and hopefully I will get notified and I can answer you as well. So let me know you're here. Let me know why you clicked on this video, why you're watching. But the idea of vital, not just healthy, but vital um, is a big distinction for me. Like I was just saying, from surviving to thriving, there's a big distinction there. And I really wanted to look into that a little bit further, because how can we like what is that distinction in our animals between just surviving and actually thriving, being healthy versus versus being vitally vital and vitally healthy, right? So the very first thing that I came across when I was doing research for today is fresh breath. Now, that may sound like, duh, Jessica, but hear me out, okay? Because your dog, I, like there's, there's this term that we have somehow just been like, yeah, that it is what it it isn't. Um, um, dog breath, right? Well, no, your dog's breath shouldn't smell bad. And I, I do want to like just throw a little caveat in there because right after my dog eats something, yeah, I'm gonna smell that food on her breath. But in general, her her breath should not smell bad, nor should your dog's. And if your dog's breath smells bad, then we definitely need to address this. There could be um, some dental issues going on. There could be other um, 
other things going on in their mouth that maybe isn't directly related to their teeth. They could have an abscess. They could have um, they could have dental issues. They could have rotting teeth. That's one thing we definitely want to get them checked out if your dog has bad breath because there are reasons for this. Now, another reason for bad breath could be that there's actually something negative going on in their gut that can cause bad breath as well. So there are a lot of reasons that your dog could potentially have bad breath and we do want to address them. We want to make sure that their teeth are clean, that their gums are um, nice and pink, not, not red and inflamed. We wanna keep their dental health up. Um, my favorite way to do this, my preferred method for doing this is with raw meaty bones. However, if you're like me and you have a little princess dog who does not like to <laughs> chew on raw meaty bones, you do need to brush their teeth like you need to. And a lot of people say, well, you know, you know, animals in the wild don't brush their teeth. Yeah, because they're eating whole prey. They are eating bone, which means that they are getting their teeth cleaned naturally. If your dog is not getting their teeth cleaned naturally, then we have to do that. Um, and it's really super easy. You can you can use your finger. You can use one of those little finger toothbrushes. You can use a little child's toothbrush. They make pet toothbrushes. Um, you can even just use a piece of gauze with a little bit of coconut oil and get in there and rub at the gum line, like gently, of course. Rub at the gum line gently and, you know, preferably every day. But even if you can get to this once a week, you're going to be doing much better. Um, your dog is going to be doing much better. So that is the first thing I want to talk about is their breath, um, which turned into their teeth, of course. Now, if your dog has bad breath and their teeth are fine, their, their dental health is completely fine, there's nothing going on in their mouth. And you, so we have now ruled that out and now we're thinking, okay, maybe there's something going on in the gut. I would definitely recommend seeking out the help of a holistic or an integrative or a homeopathic veterinarian because an allopathic veterinarian may, but may not um, understand gut health well enough to be able to help you. And hopefully you have a good enough relationship with your veterinarian that you can say, hey, this is where my head is going. We've ruled this, you know, we've ruled out X, Y, Z. I need to now look at ABC. Hopefully you have a good enough relationship with your veterinarian. They can say, look, that's not something I know much about. That's not something I specialize in. Here's where I can refer you, or you can just go and find some referrals yourself, which I think is a good idea. But that is, that's where my head goes when we talk about breath and fresh breath, because your dog should not have bad breath. Like, I, I don't know where this idea that is just like normalized for dogs to have bad breath, but it isn't. Um, I think because of all the kibble they eat, that's how it's become normalized, but it's, it's not, it should not be normalized <laughs> because they're not supposed to have bad breath. Um, all right. The second thing we want to talk about when we are considering the difference in a healthy animal and, an, and a vitally healthy animal, um, specifically today we're talking about dogs, but this really can be true with all, all of our animals. Um, and us, <laughs> um, a shiny, clean coat and nails. And I wanted to throw their nails in because I was telling you earlier that um, Kim's back nails, that is what prompted today's video topic. Uh, so I did want to throw nails in, but a healthy dog on the inside is going to look healthy on the outside as well. So we're, we're looking for a shiny, clean coat as an indication of good health while a dull coat um, along with possibly excessive licking, scratching, bald spots, etc., can be a sign of underlying medical issues. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Dr. Dr. Falconer again, and he calls it the itch. Um, when he is referring to dogs who have um, itchy skin that are scratching all the time, maybe have red inflamed ears, these actually make up the majority of health concerns in vet clinics in the United States. Something like, I'm, gonna, I'm spitballing here, but um, I do know he has talked about it before, so it's somewhere around like 80% of concerns that people bring into the vet clinic with their dogs. Itchy skin, red inflamed ears. And we talked a little bit a couple weeks ago about 
vaccinosis. Now, I haven't gotten, I know I haven't gotten into detail about vaccinosis on YouTube. Um, I will say I did go into more detail on vaccinosis on Patreon. So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about that, I definitely hope to see you join the family um, because it is there. It's all there for you. Um, in fact, there's going to be a bonus for today's content that my pay, that the, you know the Patreon family got as well. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But um, vaccinosis is a really interesting term and it's a kind of a very, it's a term that, that has a very broad array of symptoms associated with it. And these are symptoms that can pop up from immediately to up to a month or two after vaccination. And not just vaccination, but over vaccination um, is really what we're looking at. So when we are um, adding more vaccine than necessary into the body, right? And itching, red inflamed ears, um, just, yeah, that is a huge, 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 probably one of, pro probably the number one um, symptom that dogs especially are getting from over vaccination. So um, again, we talked about vaccinosis a little bit previously, so I don't want to go too much into detail on that today, but the idea that when we're healthy on the inside, we also like our health shines on the outside. So when we're looking at our dog, we're looking for a shiny, clean coat and healthy, um, and trimmed nails, <laughs> right? Um, staying on top of those trimmed nails and their nails should be growing because they are healthy. Just like with us, the healthier we are, like the healthier our hair looks, the healthier our nails look and they grow, they grow faster, the healthier we are. So that's another thing that we see in our dogs when they are vitally healthy. Um, so let me just check in with you guys. Again, I know I, I see some people watching and I appreciate you so very much. Make sure you are posting in the comment section or the chat section, depending on where you're watching. Let me know you're here. Let me know a little bit about you and your dog. Let me know um, even why you clicked on this video or if you have, if you have questions about today's topic or maybe you have questions not necessarily related to, today, to today's topic, but I still can possibly answer them for you. So go ahead and post in the chat. And thank you so much for being here live. If you are watching every play, you can do the same. You can go ahead and post and let me know what's going on with you and your pets. And I would um, uh, be very, very happy to reply. So let's move on to the third one of these. This is not necessarily like a full list, but I did want to get in as much as I could for just, you know, when you're looking at a dog or even a cat, you can tell a lot of times how healthy they are. So maintaining a lean weight. So <laughs> obesity in our pets is huge right now. And it is increasing. Like it is just growing and growing and growing. And especially in the U.S. Um, and really any place that the primary diet diet is kibble, um, it is it is getting really really bad. Obesity causes diabetes, heart problems, lung conditions, bone and joint disease, including arthritis, skin conditions, and even some types of cancer. So maintaining a lean weight is very important. So in your dog, when you're looking, um, if you're looking down on a dog. You're going to see, you know, their rib cage generally in most dogs is going to kind of be the largest like width of a dog. And then their waist kind of tapers in at their hips and then their hips come back out. So that is ideally what your dog, you should see in your dog. At the same time, you shouldn't be able to see their rib cage. So like the bones of their rib cage. I'm trying to, like, I can visualize this, but <laughs> you've probably seen this before. Like when you look at your dog, you shouldn't be able to see um, their ribs. Like that means your dog, and in most breeds, there are some breeds that you might actually be able to see their rib cage and that be a healthy way for them. But in most dogs, you shouldn't actually be able to see each individual rib. Your dog, if so, might be 
underweight um, bite, but they're, so their rib cage is generally going to be the whitest part, and then it tapers back in at uh, down to their hips. So that is one of the ways you can tell if your pet is a healthy weight. So it's an important, it's really important to maintain that lean figure. And I do want to mention if your dog is overweight, um, if your dog or your cat, by the way, loses weight rapidly, that's an issue as well. So we want to definitely check with our veterinarian if that happens. So I did want to throw that in for this. So the next thing I want to talk about, and this is, I know I have talked about this before. It's been a while and it may sound gross. So bear with me, but it is so, so important. It is, it is so incredibly important for you to, <laughs> for you to be really involved at what comes out of your pet. So when we talk about their urine and their stool, which I'm just going to say it, it's their poop and their pee, right? Like that, we need to be aware. It is so very important. And a lot of times, especially with our cats, it is the very first indication for us that something could be wrong with our pets. So if Kim, if her poop changes, I am, I know it. And I'm questioning, okay, what did she eat? Did we make any changes? Generally, when that happens, I know that she probably the night before got a snack that was a little bit too fatty for her. And I don't worry too much about it um, because it goes right back to normal. But we want to know the color. We want to know the consistency. We want to know how often they're going and the approximate volume <laughs> every time they do. And it's really, really important to know that and to be on top of that. And if you are, um, what is this? Oh, hang on a second, guys. I somehow turned my, turned my watch on for, <laughs> um, um, exercise. I don't know how I did that. Um, so it was like buzzing me because my heart rate wasn't up. Okay. So here are some things when you're paying attention to your dog's poop specifically that you never want to see. Blood, mucus, worms, um, a chalky white discoloration, or a black tar-like consistency. We want to go to the vet if we're seeing any of these things. Um, very, very important. So there are so many different reasons, um, different things going on that could cause a change in your dog's stool uh, diet, stress, allergies, parasites, bacteria, viruses, and many underlying health conditions can all cause changes in your dog's stool. So it is always a good idea to have a chat with your vet if you're noticing any changes in your dog's stool. Um, I do want to quickly mention their urine as well, because it should be a clear yellow color. Um, if you ever notice that it's a really dark yellow or bright yellow, maybe you might consider it depending on who you ask. It, it might look dark or it might look bright. Um, that is generally a sign of dehydration. Other, any other colors? So we're talking about orange, pinks, reds, any other colors, we want to get to the vet ASAP. Like these can be medical emergencies. So another reason that we want to stay on top of what is coming out of our dogs, I did want to quickly mention, um, let's see. Yes, I did want to quickly, quickly mention about diarrhea because this happens. I, I mean, it just happens sometimes. And not even like you can rack your brain and think nothing has changed, but sometimes these things just happen. Um, generally with Kim, I give it about a day and most of the time it's done and over with. If it lasts longer than that, then I know something else is going on. Um, I know we have talked before about the importance of symptoms. Symptoms are so incredibly important and they are telling us that there is something going on in the body. When we suppress symptoms, how, how can we possibly know if what we're doing for the 
real, the main issue that's going on is working or not if we suppress symptoms. So I don't like to, if at all possible, suppress symptoms. Um, sometimes we have to, sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes those symptoms are just too much to handle and we need some relief. I get that. Um, but I did want to just kind of throw in there again, a reminder about symptoms and how important they are. If you have questions about that, I would love to talk about it more. Uh, but I did want to throw that in there. So let me just check in with you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Um, we're getting ready to start a new new day. I checked the weather here where I'm at. It it is very overcast. It's windy. It and then the weather tells me it's supposed to be 94 today. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I guess it will. We'll see. <laughs> um, let me know what the weather is where you're at and where you're at, so I know what to connect it to. Um, yeah. So. Okay, a clean, oh, here's the next thing we're looking at in our dogs to tell the difference in a healthy animal and a vitally healthy animal. Clean, odor-free, non-itchy, non-red ears. So when we think about our dog's ears, are they always scratching at them? That's a problem. Are they red and inflamed? That's a problem. Um, <clears throat> do they stay clean in general? that would be great. If not, that's a problem. Um, I know we talked a little bit about their ears earlier when I was talking about vaccinosis, but just the ears in general are another indication of how healthy a dog is. So if there's a smell coming from your dog's ears, it's not a good thing. Um, probably a yeast infection going on. You need to get to the vet. If there's like a black or brown gunk in your dog's ear, that's not good either. It could either be a sign of an ear infection or ear mites, which either one needs to be treated. Um, now, in the, the case of an ear infection, yeah, we need to treat the ear infection. We also need to treat the underlying issues in our dog's body. So um, I, I was... I put all of this information out to my Patreon family. Um, they get first access to everything, uh, including when I go live on YouTube. So they got all of this information already with some extra bonus information. Um, so if you're not part of the Patreon family, I definitely recommend you check it out. You can go to my link tree. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can go to the description and click. The, uh, I think it's the very first link in the, in the description. If you're anywhere else, go to my link tree and you can get to Patreon. Um, or you can just go to Patreon and search the Pet Parenting Reset. I definitely hope to see you over there and join the family because you get so much extra content over there and first look at anything that goes live anywhere else. Um, but I, I was telling them about, um, yeah, so when we're, when we're thinking about the ears in general, like if we have an issue with the ears, if there's an infection, if they're, they're just gunk, you know, have a bunch of gunk in them. Um, we definitely like seeking out the help of an allopathic veterinarian or a traditional um, Western medicine veterinarian is important because we want to address these issues. But I also recommend following up with either a holistic or an integrative or a homeopathic veterinarian because they're actually going to look at the underlying cause. That is so, so important. What's happening in your dog's ears is a symptom. And we need to treat that because, the I mean, that's a very delicate area. We don't want an infection, for instance, to go on for too long untreated. That can cause all kinds of other problems. So we need to look at that immediately. That's a symptom that we do need to address very quickly. However, we don't want to ignore the underlying issues that are going on in your dog's body. So I want to throw that out there for all of you watching live. I did go a little bit more into detail about that on Patreon. So definitely check that out if you're not already part of the Patreon family. Now, I could not put this list together without including blood work. So it is so important that our pets, our dogs, what we're talking about today, our dogs are getting their annual checkups, or if they're senior dogs, that probably is a, um, a semi-annual checkup, so every six months. And those checkups are really important, regardless of what kind of veterinarian you use. Um, and they all know your dog's body, right? They 
these these visits are so incredibly important to have your vet look them over and notice any anything that you may not because the reality is when i mean we live with something day in and day out we become blind to certain things so while yes i check kim all the time there may be something that i miss just because i'm with her all the time and i'm seeing it and i may not see something that has been you know slowly growing or there are just things that your vet may notice that you may not. And there are things that your vet is going to check that you're not checking, um, like their vital signs. And there are vital signs that you can check on your own. Um, but having the veterinarian do that is so incredibly important. And having that blood work done, having that blood panel done, so, so important. And, and I, I know I talked about this with our cats because dogs are a little bit better about telling us that they don't feel good than our cats are. But a lot of times these blood panels can let us know that something is happening inside the body and it's just starting, right? So we're not seeing any physical signs or symptoms yet. Something may be just starting and we can go ahead and get on top of it. Um, so these blood panels are so, so incredibly important and as, a, along with any other diagnostic tools that your veterinarian recommends. So I don't, I don't want to leave that out. Um, but these are these are measures of health in our dog and so incredibly important that, that we do them. All of these are, are, are measures of health in our dog. So like I was saying at the beginning, the difference in health and vitality, then it's, it's fascinating to me how much control we have over our own health. And, and in turn, our dog's health and our cat's health, health is so, we have so much control over it. And I think so many of us feel like we don't have any control over it, um, mostly because of how we've been marketed to our entire lives. Like this is the bag of kibble that you need to feed your cat or your dog their entire life. Don't ever deviate from it. This is what's gonna keep them healthy. And if you change, you're gonna be hurting your pet. Like, these are things that have been programmed into our brains for probably our whole lives, depending on how old we are, right? And they make us feel like we have no control over anything. The, the reality is that we have so much control. Um, the only thing that we really don't con have control over is genetics. We have control over environment. We have control over the food we put in our bodies and our pets' bodies. We have control over... Um, the chemicals we use in our homes, we have control over so much. We have control over using um, healthy supplements, which is how I got to the topic of trimming Kim's nails because, you know, I've, I've always had to trim her front paws. They grow. They don't grow, they previously didn't grow super fast, but they grow. I never had to trim her nails, her back nails, never. I When I first got her, I was going to the vet and having them trim her nails. They never had to trim her back nails. And it's interesting because you generally get a different vet tag every time. So they like nobody ever put it together that like she never had her back nails trimmed. But like one vet tag would be like, hmm, I didn't have to trim her back nails today. And then we'd go again and a different vet tag would be like, hmm, I didn't have to trim her back nails today. <laughs> and I never have had to trim her back nails up until um, about about a week ago. I sat down to trim her nails and I always check her back nails just in case. And boy, had they grown. And I was like, oh my goodness, what have we changed? And to me, that's a sign. Uh, like I already thought she was perfectly healthy. And, and by all accounts, she was perfectly healthy. She has a beautiful... Um, coat, healthy skin. Uh, she doesn't have bad breath. I could do a little bit better. I need to do better with brushing her teeth because she doesn't like eating raw meaty bones. Um, but uh, she has clean ears that don't smell. She, um, what were the other things we talked about? Oh, she always gets her blood work done every year and it's perfect. Um, she eats a super healthy diet. I am on top. I know what is coming out of her. I know like if there's a change in her poop or her pee, like I know what is going on. And 
by all accounts, she is very, very, and has been very, very healthy. And now it just, it, it really made me look at the difference in health levels. Like she was already very healthy, but now how much more like vitally healthy is she? And what was that difference? I started adding what basically is like a multivitamin, like a supercharged multivitamin to her diet. And I think that has made all the difference. Um, I talk about that more on Patreon. If you're part of the Patreon family, you already got that information. Um, if you are not, I definitely recommend you join the family. There are four different tiers for you to choose from. So I know you're going to find a tier that works best for you. Uh, but this like supercharged <laughs> uh, multivitamin that she has been taking, I just think it has leveled up her health and it's not something that I make or sell. Um, so I'm not, and I'm not here to promote it or anything. I'm just telling you what has, what I have noticed in my dog since we have started using it. And uh, yeah, so that is, it's called Canine Immune Complete. It's from Vital Pet Health. If you wanna know more about it, definitely join uh, join the family over on Patreon because I gave you all the details about it. Uh, all, I gave the Patreon family all the details about it. So with that, I hope this was interesting and informative um, because there are so many different ways in, in which, and, and they all need to be like to get in combination. We're going to see either a dog is great in all of these areas or is not so great in probably all, if not most, like most, if not all of these areas. Uh, so that's it. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining me, uh, whether you're, you watched live or you're watching a repeat of this video. Thanks so much for being here. I can't wait to see you on the next video. Until then, please make sure to give this a thumbs up. And um, if you're not following or subscribed, make sure you subscribe or follow, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, yeah, so you get notified anytime I upload a video or I go live. With that, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye.